process, he got to meet Harris. And uh, through Harris, I got to meet my new neighbor. At that time, Robert was still working in New York. And we just knew that this amazingly talented, glamorous fashion designer had moved in next door. <laughs> Who didn't drive, I think, at the time. Right. Didn't have a car. Yeah. <laughs> So that was, that was clever. You know, you buy house cars out of the city, but you don't have any way to get there. <laughs> so we didn't see too much of them. Uh, there was a lot of renovation going on in the house, and we thought, okay, so somebody cool is going to be moving in, and then we never saw him. Um, but anyway, eventually I did get to meet him, and uh, he, he quickly won the hearts of, of many people in our area, uh, including me. And then, um, I guess, four or five years later, you came up to Cripplebush full time and literally started a cottage industry, which I think some of you know about. But I mean, it really is kind of an amazing little story. And uh, so we would drive by every day this little cottage, and every once in a while you'd catch Robert like walking between the two houses carrying things. And little did I know, he was you know pouring porcelain and sewing clothes and doing all this stuff himself. <clears throat> but we started to hear about the business, and peripherally, because I worked with Harris at the time, um, I got the lowdown on a lot of it, but not, you know, you don't quite grasp it. And it wasn't until, I guess about, mm, 96 or 97, well, it was at the, the Roseland event, so that was 96, that I really <laughs> got what was going on. And even as Robert has said, um, we we're frequently perceived as being much bigger than we really are. And at that point, you really were perceived as being much bigger. I think. <laughs> to pull that many designers together at a major venue in Manhattan with Demi Moore and Donald Trump and Michelle Crow and the whole crew is pretty astounding. Um, so that not just because of the glamour part of it, but of course, I was a little starstruck. Um, at that point, I started thinking, wow, this business is really turning into something. And um, Harris and I, on our way back and forth to the Y, three days a week, would talk, obviously, about the real estate business, but we'd talk about what Robert's business was going through and how it was developing and uh, all these amazing things he was getting involved in. And I remember subconsciously thinking, God, that sounds really cool. And then, yeah, I hit 45, I decided I needed to make a change, um, and I was going to make a change. And I told Harris what I was doing, and he told Robert, the next day I got a call from Robert, totally unexpected, totally out of the blue, never even thought ever that I would end up working at the Tyner Doll Company. Um, and he presented it in a very unflattering fashion. He was, he was extremely straightforward. And uh, obviously, I, I joined the, the ship and the crew. And for all of you who appreciate what Robert's created over 20 years and the dolls that he creates, I appreciate the fact that he's given me a third career. Uh, it really is a third career that I was able to have. And it's been a pretty wild ride for 10 years, as I was saying earlier. I'm never, ever bored. I'm the opposite of bored. I, I want to be bored. <laughs> so if any of you guys have a boring opportunity, let me know. But I'm never, ever, ever bored. And um, as we move forward, as you guys have heard this weekend, uh, we have a new venture. It's really exciting. It's hopefully very playful and will offer us a whole new set of learning experiences and, uh, and also fun experiences. So I'd like to honor Robert at this moment by just saying he's given me an amazing extension of my business career that I never ever expected. And hats off. And now we'd like to have the stand-up comedian, unexpectedly, of the Tyner Doll Company, Joe Petrolisi. Yay! Nervous? <laughs> I'm gonna stand over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's got a bum head. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know, I get asked a lot of times. A lot of people ask me, you know, what's it like working at Tom O'Donnell? What's it like working for Robert? And you know, you, you always say, I always say the same thing. It's nice. <laughs> you know, to say, it's okay. <laughs> the only way I can compare it is to, um, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, you know that um, the Christmas show, Rudolph of the Red Nose Reindeer? We're all like the toys in the land of misfit toys. <laughs> and Robert's Rudolph. <laughs> Especially after two glasses of wine. <laughs> although I think there was another finger in there. <laughs> but um, anyway, about, my, actually my story is similar to Jack's, about nine and a half, about nine years ago, I guess. Um, I got, I worked in the, in the garment industry, I was a fashion designer, and I couldn't stand it anymore. I get on the train every day, and I'm sick of it. I'm like, I can't do this, I just can't go to this job anymore. And through Jack, I met Robert. And long story short, now I get up in the morning, I feed my five dogs, I feed the cat, I get ready, I get in the car, and there is not, I don't even feel an ounce of s stress or nerves, except what are we gonna be doing for lunch? <laughs> That's the big question of the day. Where do we go? Robert and I will go outside, stand in the street, and look around and go, where are we going today? <laughs> but um, it's just been an amazing ride. Uh, you, you, I can't even, you can't even explain it. I work with really great people, really wonderful people. Uh, Robert's just a very wonderful, giving person. And I, you, Everybody should be as fortunate as we are to be working for a company. And Robert's shaking his head. But Robert, you know, everybody should be as fortunate as Robert to have us. They like that. See, I could be nice. <laughs> Dancing the night away with that at the Amphar function, and uh, having his picture show up in the Daily News the next day, with <laughs> dancing with Demi Moore. I mean, I guess glamour was what he got, and um, and here it's been it down those no <laughs> <laughs> The the reality was when when Jack told me that uh, that he was going to be leaving the real estate profession, 
I said to Robert, don't let Jack get away. He was very much uh, <clears throat> a part of our lives. And uh, he had another career opportunity, which was very good for him. And he would have done really well at it. But uh, I knew that what the Tonner Company needed was somebody like Jack. For Robert to have somebody who was uh, stable and sane and a business person and committed and honest as they come and personable and all kinds of wonderful things. That was the start of what has really blossomed into an amazing group of people working with Robert. Um, and it, it is wonderful as they describe it. I, I, I don't know of anybody who have as much fun as these folks do when they come to convention and when they interact with you. Uh, you make their lives really worthwhile because you enable Robert to fulfill his dreams. And for that, I'm eternally grateful because it brings a great deal of joy to my life that this guy can have his dreams fulfilled. Um, early on in our relationship, and next month, we actually celebrate our 25th anniversary together. I totally lost what my next thought was about that, but, um, <laughs> but uh, 